uh, this is um, a map of the requirements for optimal conditions in comparison to resilience and efficiency. So this is uh, from Bernard Leotard. I mentioned his work yesterday, complementary currency. And so if we have a system that has high efficiency, too much efficiency and we get brittleness. Too much efficiency squeezes out all optionality. So if you've got a high, and there are some places that you need high level efficiency um, with machines, but we're talking about in human systems and so on. If you have too much efficiency, like clockwork, like clockwork, which is comes back to um, the level of uh, the fourth level there, which is good, bad, black and white, um, ethnocentric, which is everything has order, everything has place, everything has structure, everything has this. Too much of that squeezes out the opportunity for diversity and interconnectedness. And so um, there is this beautiful zone in the middle, which is the optimum zone. And again, you know, when we're looking at designing systems, it's, it's, it's not a static. It doesn't just live in, in a static sort of format. We want it to be, we want it to breathe. And so we're constant, because this is nature. Nature's not static. Nature is always dancing. It's never, it's never fixed. There is no such thing as equilibrium. There is only a towards and a, a flow towards and a flow away from equilibrium as a dance. And so this, um, this sort of place here, and of course our fight with ourselves is that we want to create systems with really high efficiency. And yet the moment we squeeze out diversity and interconnectivity, we're losing this um, this beautiful this beautiful space, uh, and if you have too much diversity and too much interconnectivity and too much kumbaya and too much let's rule by consensus, um, you're actually not going to get any movement. It's going to stagnate. So the really simple diagrammatic representation of reaching that point, and it's not a fixed place. It's a movement between. Uh, between diversity, interconnectivity, and efficiency. Does that, that make sense? It's a really simple model. It's very self-explanatory. But um, and this applies to all systems because it's, you know, it applies to currency systems. It applies to um, human relationships. If we have got a family running like clockwork and there's no opportunity for sitting down and just doing crazy stuff, you know, we've squeezed out a whole lot of life force energy. If you've got too much diversity, interconnectivity, and not enough structure, you have this. It's yeah. like red brain battle. Yeah, yeah, it is. You know, on, on some it, on some degree, it's it's. Um, but we all sense this. You know, we all know that that we're, and, and it, it it also maps back to which I haven't put up the loose tight. If it's too tight, mm -hmm. you can't breathe. If it's too loose, you're you're completely out of the box and uncontrollable. So yeah, um, very simple model. Can you give an example of what, you know, something in the optimal zone would look like? Like what would be your trait for the business operating in that op optimal zone? Would you yeah, well, and so, so you, have, you have adequate, sufficient structure and procedures yep. and boundaries and the threshold crossing in place. Yep. Um, and it is kind of, so if we you know, draw, draw a big circle here, and that's the threshold crossing that, that has the rules and agreements, which is we're covering later today, and the boundaries, and et cetera, et cetera, we have that there. But in this space, there's, you know, depending, there's a lot of room to move, you know. <laughs> and, and you want to make sure that you invite diversity into that space. And so it's not like it's so tight, the structure's so tight that it's like, I can't breathe, there's no creativity, there's no ability to bring any of that, any of that sort of wild red. But contrary, and we know that when we don't have diversity of opinion, mm -hmm. if, we're, if we're going to the same thinking set and the same mindset and we don't have the diversity of opinion, then we are not getting any movement. It, it stagnates. Mm -hmm. And so, but if we have too much diversity, or too, and too much interconnectivity and too much of the green, we just can't progress. So, you know, it, from, it get, from a leadership point of view, if, um, 
which I'll be talking about later, but the steward leader who's holding the space for this, this is one of the, the areas that we need to attenuate to. So it's attenuate to where is the diversity and where is the efficiency. And it's just having that, um, that be really alive versus a fixed rigid structure. So let me ask you this question because most of you have had, other than Peter perhaps, um, had some experience of working in a business have you ever worked in a business where the structure is really fixed and tight and you've felt like trapped in a something where you just can't, there's, there's no opportunity for you to be creative and, and to bring your whole self to this because it's just too tight? Um, and this can also happen in families. Um, anyone not had that experience of being confined or constricted by the rigidity of an efficient, highly efficient structure? Yeah, and so you haven't had that experience? Oh, no, I haven't. <laughs> You've had that experience? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, you know, our, our business school 101 is teaching us, you know, efficient, 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 efficient systems. And it goes back to, I've put it up on a flip chart now, so fine. It goes back to um, the interior, what was on the board here, the interior and the exterior. You know, they want the right-hand side of the quadrant to be mapped so, and measured. Um, yeah. this, is, this is a really simple tool to show, to use, when you're trapped in this because the moment people see this, that there is, that there is just no... If, if you want an organisation to be innovative and creative, let me put it another way. In our world that we're, going, we're in right now, where the pace of change is so fast, and there are organisations that are going on the exponential, so they're just going from the, this way like that. If you are not looking at that and doing that as a business, if you're trapped in this hardcore efficiency cycle, the world's going to leave you behind. Mm -hmm. Like, it just will because that this is also the efficiency, the high core efficiency cycle is the red tape and the bureaucracy and the slow and the check boxes and do all of that sort of thing. Uh, and so, whereas on the other side, people are terrified of the diversity and the human connection because it means my safe little worldview might be rocked. Mm. I'm not going to have, you know, someone might challenge that what I think and the way I've informed my life and the way that is, is going to be challenged and I don't want that. And, and so, um, so it depends on, I mean, I know in the way that I work and those who've been around me like Nick, Nick and Peter, I, you know, one of the things that I do is over there, Tiago. Um, it, one of the things that I do is, you know, my structure, the way I work is I get really clear on what we want as the outcome. And then I, it doesn't appear that I have this structure. I don't work with a structure, but I'm actually working because I'm working with the principle of emergence. And for some people who really like structure, that's very uncomfortable. Yeah, take, take a, crea a wildly creative child. Show me any child who's not creative, like when they're born. Show me any child who's not creative and doesn't have this capacity to, to be curious and searching. And it, that doesn't mean they have to... You know, my daughter is incredibly creative, but I didn't have to change the house when she was born because she wasn't one of those kids that wanted to get in the cupboard and try all the chemicals <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> um, she wasn't one of those. But she's wildly creative. You put children into an education system mm -hmm. that is designed to train efficiency and conformity and to not ask questions, like, what is education? With asking questions. And to not ask questions. And you squeeze the... The, the, the creativity like just right out and you end up with a bunch of conforming humans who you know have been told to do this and get a job and you know essentially some form of machine um, and it's not going to work it, it doesn't work and it's not going to work for the future and and in the then we spend the rest of our adult life trying to untangle that <laughs> <laughs> trying to get back to what we were when we were, you know when we were creative so yeah anyway very powerful model um, very simple graphic. Christine, I see that happening certainly in the agriculture side of things. All of our research and development areas are stuck in it's just efficiency, efficiency, Correct. efficiency. We're just starting to get some yeah. people thinking outside the box, but we've got all these PhD M recipients and a bit like yours, Bernard, experience right at the end recipient is actually trying to 
where we naturally flow yeah. to keep getting jammed yeah. with this yeah. efficiency. And you can see it, you know, when you understand the, the stages of development, the fourth stage, you can see that that, that structure and, and, and uh, um, the, good, the good and bad, the right and the wrong, my way or the highway, um, that, that level of thinking is where a lot of this is. Yet what's happening with humanity and enterprise is, is another principle of Bucky's, which I'm not going to go into it too deeply, which is accelerated acceleration. Mm -hmm. And so this is, we are going through a process where everything is speeding up and everything is speeding up and everything is speeding up in, in mostly the exterior world, which means Remember, unity is plural at minimum two. <laughs> so if everything's speeding up out here, where do we need to slow down? So yeah, we, we need, to, we need to, to, to slow down on the interiors because the pace on the outside is going so fast. And, and that's just, a, that's just a, a way of thinking about it. Yet most of what we're encouraged to do is to go fast, go fast. That's where we squeeze out. We're just so busy that we squeeze out anything approaching deep human connection, approaching the ability to sit. You know, how many people will actually sit down and go, I'm going to have an hour to think. When did you last do that? <laughs> Pen and paper, I'm going to have an hour to think. No? No. Yeah. Okay. You do, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, how crazy is that? To go through and ask some questions of ourselves and inquire and go inside and, you know, really think. And so we just don't do that. But the absence of doing that means that we actually are really approaching brittleness. And it's no surprise when people break. Break. Break down, break. Break up because we've squeezed out all the spaces for connection, for diversity of thinking, for an inquiry into some future, for all of that sort of stuff. It's just been squeezed out. Anyone relate to this? <laughs> yeah. I think you're right, like we don't spend a lot of time. So one hour, just even five minutes with our phone. Oh, okay, right, there you go, one hour. I was being very ambitious. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> You know brittle because, and we can all have that experience. You know brittle because if Nikki is in a brittle state, I just have to do this and she breaks. And the break isn't because of this. The break is because of all of the accumulation of everything that comes beforehand. And that is enough to tip it. That comes back to our um, perturbation crossing the threshold. Yeah, yeah. So all of this is accumulating, and then I just tap her on the shoulder, just at the right time in the right place, Kairos timing. See, it's all linked. <laughs> and she breaks. And if I'm not aware of, I might go, oh, you know, what have I done? And go into my own, own story about what, what could I have done? To, you know, you know, and in actual fact, it's not, it's this accumulated thing which comes back to clean communication. You see, there's all links. Because this clean communication piece doesn't, person A could be you and person B could be you. You could be having a serious interior conversation with yourself and, and creating a serious upset with yourself. Like, yes, we do that. And so, yeah, it's all linked. Good? Yeah. yeah.